those of you who haven't seen this, this is a style of trading called meat and potatoes. Um, the reason it's called meat and potatoes is because really that's all you need to survive. If you can learn this and master this one style of trading, that's all you need to be successful in the markets. With that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a file with everybody. So either download it, screenshot it, um, do what you need to do. But this is a sheet we're going to be using. These are a set of rules we're going to be using as we go over this style. Um, and I'm going to be referring back to this throughout the session. Uh, this is an interactive session. The more involved you guys get, the better. Because um, if you have questions and you want to go through examples with me as I'm going to be asking for volunteers, a lot of y'all who haven't seen it before are thinking the same types of things. So those of you who speak up and we make this more interactive, the more everybody learns. So it's just good for everybody. Uh, hopefully go ahead and again, screenshot this, take a picture of it, or I also uh, uploaded it into the chat. So with all that being said, um, we are going to go ahead. Okay. In regards to this style, there's the left side and the right side. So you look at the sheet that we have, obviously the left side of the sheet and the right side of the sheet. Uh, this whole trading style is based upon trading within, being able to identify what the trend is and being able to take trades within that trend, regardless of what time frame you're on. This set of rules works on all the time frames. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, oh, first things first, also in reference to this trading style. Here we go. When we're referring to, this is very big on colors of candles. Like that, that just has like everything to do with it. Um, and you'll see on the sheet, uh, there's the color blue is on there or it mentions blue. Uh, just be aware that blue and green are the same color. Uh, it's just from different platforms. One's blue candles, one's green candles. Either way, they're both bullish and or candles going up rather than down. Uh, so green is blue, blue is green. Um, so in reference to looking at candles, when we see here, when we have substantial colors or candle colors, like right here, we have one, two, three, four greens. We're always going to count that as one candle in reference to this left side. Why? Because it's the same candle. Right now we're on a daily chart. If we go to a week, it's still going to be one green candle. Why? Because it's composed of five daily candles and these candles are going up. So the only reason the candle breaks from one candle to the next is just because in time, whatever the time period that your chart is on has ended and the next one has begun. So again here, we're going to have four green candles. Then when we look to the left, we have the next color of candle and that color is red. So that's one red candle. We count that as one candle. Then to the left, we have green. That's one candle, one green candle. We count that as one red, one red, one green, one red, one, two, three, four green. So here that's four green. So we view that as one candle, one red, one, two, three, four green. That's one candle, one, two red. That counts as one red candle. Pretty simple. You guys get that. So just remember that as we're moving forward to this whole thing. Um, next piece uh in regards to this left side when we're doing trends you see these wick things here you see on the top of your sheet it says wicks ignore so you on this side of when we're going through the left side we call this the left side we we ignore wicks so let's go to step one step one is identifying what we call the action candle it's the action candle in this instance it's green the reason it's called the action candle is because that's where the action is. that's where the actual movement is all these other candles to the left are already closed candles but in reference to this one, we have one, two, three, four green candles, all counting as one. So step one, identify your action candle. That's these four green candles. We ignore that. Step one, identify the first color uh, candle color pattern. That's the green. We ignore that. We go to step two. Step two is identifying what we call the anchor. The anchor is going to be the color of candle to the left of our action. In this instance, it's this one red candle. We're going to go ahead and mark the high and the low of our red candle. Somebody just mark orange on the, there we go. <laughs> that stayed last time. Um, actually, I'm going to fix these lines real quick. Okay. So step two, identify the color of candle to the left of the action. In this instance, it is a red candle. So we have one red candle counting as the anchor. We mark the high and the low of it. We then go to step three. We have to figure out if our anchor is engulfed and or what we call sideways. What does that mean? That means once we've identified the red, we go to the color to the left of the red. And as we do that, we see this one green candle here, yeah? 
So we have to ask ourselves, is this green candle bigger than our red action? The answer to that question is yes. You see here at the very bottom, it's a little bit bigger. So if it's bigger, it's engulfing. We call that sideways. We then skip it and move on. And this might sound right now like, oh, what does that even mean? And is this even a big deal? Uh, as we go through this more and more, it's going to make a whole lot of sense to y'all. And uh, you'll see how cool and powerful this trading style is. Um, we'll go here to a different time frame. Again, a different time frame. We're going to get a different picture. Um, so we will go here with this first one again. Again, we have what? One Step one, identify our action candles, right? One two green candles, that's our action. To the left, look to the left, to the color on the left. That's for step two. We have this red anchor candle, one red anchor candle, right? We mark the high and the low of our anchor. We then go to step three. We look to the color to the left. You see we have one, two green candles. Let me ask ourselves, are the two green candles engulfing our red anchor candle? Are the two green bigger than the red anchor? The answer to that question is yes. So again, that's sideways. We skip it and move on. Let's try to find one that's not. All right, so here we go. On this one, step one, <laughs> whoever's marking this up, if y'all could undo that. There we go, boom. Are they still, yep, there we go. Um, okay, step one. Identify our action candle. That's what is the first color we see. The first color we see is red, correct? One, two red candles. All right. We identified our action. We ignore it. We go to step two. Step two is identify our anchor candle. What is the color to the left of our action candle? The color is green. We have one, two green candles. We mark the high side and the low side. We then go to step three. Is it sideways? We look at the candled color to the left. We have one, two red candles. Is this these two candles engulfing are bigger than our green candles? The answer to that question is no. It is not bigger. It's not engulfing, so it's not sideways. So that's good. We get to go now. We get to go to step four. Step four is identifying what we call or say as who is in control. What is a control candle? We take the high side of our anchor and we move left until we hit a body of a candle not a wick not the top of a candle but an actual body over here we don't see it it's way back here so we go to the low side we go to the low side of our anchor candle and we go left till we hit a body see how we hit a body right there hits the body of this green candle once we hit a body of a green candle we go down and look for what we call a color change we're on green we go down to look for where it goes from red to green that's right here we're gonna go ahead and mark that right here. Boom, that's where the green is. Or that's where it goes from red to green. On the high side, again, we went across, it's way back here. We don't see it. On the low side, we go over here till we hit a wall, a wall and or body of a candle. That's what you'll hear that referred to. We go down till we have a color change. So on this step, we're asking ourselves, what one, when we hit the high side or low side, what one hit first in relevance to time? Not price, but in actual time. And time, this one hit here on the low side because the high side's way back here. That, this, is a, this is the daily chart, so it's, you know, could be weeks or months ago. So it hit here, the low side first, right? So then we call, if it hits the low side first, we then say that, the lows are in control, the buyers are in control, and that is what we would call an uptrend. Price is moving up, we call that an uptrend. So once we've identified if we have an uptrend, we then get to go to step five. Do we have a setup? If we have a setup, look at your sheet, if we have a setup and you see where it says uptrend, if we have an uptrend, what color do we need our action? The action that we uh, ignored on the first step, now we get to go back to the first step. What color is our action candle? Our action candle is red, right? What does it say on the sheet? Rub trend with red action candle, correct? Boom. So we have a red action candle. We have a setup. We then have to, we have uptrend with a setup is what we call it. We then go to step six. Do we have a level break or anchor break is what we call that. So what does that mean? If we are in uptrend, look at your sheet. It says cannot break. Actually, I have a different version. I think y'all says cannot break uh, higher low or 
Yeah, it cannot break higher low or something like that. Really what that, go ahead and write a note or take a mental note on an uptrend. It cannot break the low of the anchor. So what does that mean? Is our action candles breaking the low of our anchor? No, it's not. And what that means too, if a wick passes through here, it's not, it hasn't broke it, but we're looking for a candle to close underneath here. If it closes underneath here, then that would be breaking the anchor and then we would skip it and move on. But in this instance, it's not breaking the low of our anchor. So we have what we call uptrend with the setup. And then we would go from this point, we would go to the right side of the chart or of the sheet you have there. And from there, we would identify a trade. We're not going to do that yet. We are going to spend some time, a good amount of time on that today in the session. But I want to go over this a couple more times. And actually, let's go ahead and look for another chart and then get one of y'all to help me with this one. Do I have somebody that wants to help on this one? I can try. All right, cool. Let's, I love it. Let's do it. So step one, what do we do? We look what is our, what's our action candle. Yep. What is our action candle? It's green. Green. How many green? Five. Five, right? One, two, three, four, five green. Okay. We ignore that. We then go to step two. What do we do for step two? We look for our anchor. Your anchor, right? What is our anchor? What's the color of our anchor? It's red. Red. How many red? Two. Two, right? Because it's one candle. Then what do we do? We look for our high and our low of our ankle. All right. Boom. Mark the high and low of our anchor. Very good. Then what? Now we need to find a wall. Step three. Why is everything falling? Don't forget step three. You always got to remember step three. Oh, if... Um, if it's not engulfing the ankle. Yeah, if it's not engulfing the anchor. We look to the color to the left of our anchor, and that is what? Green. Green. How many green? Five. Four. Four. Four green. Is it engulfing our anchor? It's not. It's not? Um. Well, not on He's, the top. Yeah, but I mean. Well, well, see these one, two, three, four green candles? Then, yeah. Are these four green candles bigger than this? These two red candles? Yeah. Go ahead and give you go ahead and give you a visual. See, we're counting these one, two, three, four green candles all as one. Yeah. So it really starts from the top of this line to the bottom of this line. The red is inside of this these overall four candles, because we count that all as one candle, right? Yeah. So it is engulfing. Um, we would call that sideways and we'd move on. Later on down the line, there's a whole set of rules for a whole other style that we can take trades off of this. But for right now, for meat and potatoes, we skip it, we move on. Um, let's find you another example. Okay, here we go. I like it right here. Boom. Okay, step one. What's our What color is our action? Green. Green, right? One green candle. We ignore. Step two. Anchor, red. Red, right? One red. We marked the high and low of our anchor, correct? Yes. Okay. Step three. If it's engulfing the anchor and it's... We, we just count the body, right? right? Not the yeah, words. yeah, just okay. the body. So it's not. It's not, right? This <laughs> one green is not bigger than our red, so it is not engulfing. It's not sideways. We get to go to step four. Now step we four. find the wall. Yeah, step four. Who's in control? The highs or the lows? So yeah. We take the high side and do what? And look for a wall. We look for a wall, right? We go across. This is even with this, so we keep going. Boom. We hit a wall right here, correct? Yes. And then we go up. We hit a red wall. We go up till we find green red, right? Mm -hmm. That's right here. Mark the high or mark where that happens. Then we take, then what do we do? We do the same in the bottom. Same in the bottom. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Boom. Exactly. Right there. Very good. We hit here. We go down and look for... A change color. Color change. change co color change. Boom. Very good. Mark it right there. Okay. So, we have this. Now we have two on the chart, right? So, what one of these happened more recently in time? The high side or the low side? The high side. The high side, right? This is a 30-minute... This is a 30-minute chart now. This happened at 1830. This one happened at 1700. So, yeah, in time, in reference to time, the high side happened more recently. Um, so then we have what we would call a downtrend. Yeah. 
Now we go to step five and what? And then we verify what's our action action yep. candle. And what is our action candle? It's green. What color do we need? Green. Green. Boom. Very good. So we now have downtrend with a setup. With a now setup. step six. If um, if the con um, action candle, it's not bigger than our ankle. Yeah, if it's not the way, if it's not breaking and closing above our anchor. Yeah. See here, this wick traded. You see the wick there. The wick traded above, but it hasn't closed. So, it's it. The candle. In order for you to skip it and move on, the candle has to close. Um, this hasn't closed yet above. It's traded above here, so you're good. But the thing is, always be aware and always be cautious. If you see a wick that comes up above it. That's giving you an indication that, hey, price might want to move higher. It's already tried to move higher and it's come back down, but there's a strong possibility that it wants to continue up. So it doesn't mean that you can't take a trade or identify a trade on the right side, but it's just something to be aware of. It's more risky because price has shown that it wants to it wants to violate the high of our anchor. The anchor is basically our playing field. That's what we're looking for when we go to the right side to identify a zone or a trade in to take short. So as long as it's not closing on top of the ankle, it's going to be still a downtrend. Yeah, yeah. It's still a downtrend. You can still take the trade. It's just you just need to mentally be aware that, hey, price has shown that it wants to go higher potentially. It hasn't closed above, but it's at least poked its head up. Be just be aware of that. You could okay. get a trend. You could be getting. It could be the first signs of a trend reversal. So would I? Um, if I would want to go in now, where should I put a stop loss? So, like, okay. Well, if you wanted to go in now, we'll go ahead and do that for an example. Um, so now we would have to go to the right side of the chart. The right side of the chart. Um, where actually is everybody? Is everybody? Is everybody understanding this? Or let me, let me pull the chat up real quick. I know. I'm, um, is everybody getting this? Let me know if you're not understanding this. Actually, that's a better question. Sweet. Well, sounds like everybody's getting this. Cool. So yeah, we'll go ahead and move over to the right side then. Um, so in, in reference to the right side, I'm going to change this over here. Boom. Here's our 30 minute chart. Typically, you're going to want to go down to a smaller time frame. Usually we like to say multiples of six. Um, this one's not going to have a good example because it's so small. Let's say this is what we had come across because this this is this high and low side is our anchor, right, on the 30-minute chart. So here how we mark the high and low of our anchor. It just transfers over here. We're on the one-minute chart. Um, this is a good example when this happened in real time. Um, what I see automatically, one, you don't really want to trade above your anchor, but um, it worked perfectly. That's probably what it came back to. But here's what I'm identifying on this one minute chart. We're just going to pay, pay, pay attention to this lower portion because it's kind of textbook. Um, the first thing you're going to look for, first off, you're going to look for a zone. This is what we call a zone. You're going to look for a strong move in and a strong move out. What does that mean? We're going to look for a candle. You see how this is like an explosive candle? This red candle closed here and it opened here, traded up just a little bit and shot way down and then closed here, right? This candle opened here probably went down a little bit, came up and then closed right here. And then this candle opened here and then shot way down, right? Everybody see that? Big move in. So we call this a big move in, what we call basing and a big move out, strong move out. So you see your, you see uh, on your sheet, it says move in, move out strength. First thing we're looking for is an area with a big move in, what we would then call basing and a big move out. We have that right here because we got this big, powerful. See, yes, it's not like a little. Uh, this candle over here is a green one over here. We call that a boring candle. Price opened here. It went up and went down, but it closed relatively close to where it opened. So yeah, there was movement, but the usually you want you want the close to be far away from the open for it to be a powerful candle, like this candle right here. See how this candle shot up, closed right here, open, boom, shot all the way up. That's a big, powerful, explosive move. That this candle says. I opened right here. I shot all the way up. I never even came back down. I'm powerful. I'm trying to go up. This is what I'm doing. Same thing with the next one. Boom. Powerful candle. 
Then we go here on the left side, dropping, dropping. That's a powerful candle, basing, powerful candle. So strength, you see this, we're looking for strength with a move in and a move out. That happened here, big move in, basing, big move out. Step two, we got to find boring candles. When we have smaller bodies with bigger wicks, that is going to be what a boring candle is. You see, in this instance, we have the small body. You got a portion of wick here and then a big wick here. If you have more wick than body, that's a boring candle. Um, so we have that. We have strong move in, boring candle, strong move out. Um, then we have to ask ourselves, is it fresh? Just pretend with me at, in real time, or if the real time was right here as we were trading, looking to identify this zone, what does it mean if it's fresh? This happened here. This price dropped, based out, and dropped out. Once this had happened, once this pattern had formed, had price come anywhere back in here to test this area yet? The answer to that question is no. Price is down here. It has not come up into this area to test it. So we, we would call that fresh. Step four, we have to ask ourselves, is it authentic? What does that mean? We have to, when we identify the zone, we got to look to the left to see if there's a wall to see if it's authentic. Because at one point, this chart, this price is moving down here, right? It's moving down. As price is moving down here, right? There are people as the price is dropping that are putting orders in there saying, hey, because price likes to retrace, grab an area, and come back down. So there might be sellers sitting here when price is dropping here, right? But until well, once this candle comes and explodes up, and clears through all of these orders. If there were sellers sitting here, these guys took all of the sellers out. They said, no, we're the buyers, we're coming in, there's a fight, they shot right through it. There wasn't a lot of sellers there, they took over. So this wall right here clears all this out. And if there's any buyers sitting here in this area, when price was moving up, people are saying, hey, I wanna take this long, I wanna take this long, there'll be buyers sitting here. If you have walls, big bodies of candles coming through, any of the buy orders that are sitting here, it's chewing through those. It's absorbing that. There's more power. There's more. There's always a fight happening. The sellers are saying, hey, yeah, buyers are here wanting to take it up, but we're the sellers. There's more of us. We have more of our homies with us. There's a fight happening, and they're just they're rolling through the buyers that are sitting here. So when you have a wall, whatever's sitting here, whenever you have a wall that's cleared through, that clears those out. And then when we come back to identify our zone here, see how we have this zone here? We have this wall next to this right here. This is, that means that it is authentic because this has come through any buyers that were already here, it cleared them out, at least for the time being, because if there's orders sitting here, price cannot move through that. If there's still, if there's more buyers sitting here than sellers, price has to stop until one wins. Are there more buyers or are there more sellers? As soon as there's, as soon as the buyers run out, boom, price will continue to drop. So that's what authentic means. This was up. Price came down, beat out all the buyers, and continued to move down. So this is fresh because price hasn't traded back into it, and it's authentic because it's cleared out any of the buy orders, at least at that time that we're sitting there because price moved down. Price can't move down if there's still buyers sitting here. So we're looking for that. Um, is it fresh? Is it authentic? Yes. Um, yeah, fresh, authentic, and then white space. White space is going to be is bigger. You see here on this drop base drop, we have this little wick right here. We call that a wick next to a wall. That is what we call white space. What white space is, is unfilled orders. When there's one wick next to a wall, that means there's unfilled orders here. What is it? Oh, so how does, how, how does that work? We have the drop, big move in. We have the basing with a boring candle and a big move out. When this is dropping, See how price closes here, opens here, comes back up, and then shoots down? So what does that mean? That meant the buyers tried to come up here and take price higher, but more sellers either stepped in the market or placed orders here that there were no more buyers willing to try to buy it and take the take price up. There was just sellers sitting there saying, well, I want to take price down, and boom, it shot out of there. So when we have one wick next to a wall, that means that there are still willing sellers sitting there to try to take price down. So on the retracement, we want to identify a wick next to a wall. Sometimes uh, in reference, I know this isn't our zone, but just to give you guys a picture, you see down below here how we have these wicks alongside a wall. We have one, actually two, three, yeah, multiple. When 
whenever you have wicks alongside the wall and you're looking to take it either either direction, you have to count. If there's more than one, you have to count. See here on the bottom side, we have one, two, three, four wicks, at least on this portion here. Um, one, two, three, four wicks, right? So we have an even, odd, even, odd. If there's an odd count, that's still established, meaning there are still established sellers sitting there. If it's an odd count, we call that cleared. That portion has been cleared out. Why is that? Because at one point, when this had happened, that was one wick there, right? There was established sellers to, hey, hey, that gave us a clue. That price came here, went up, and moved down. Okay, there's sellers sitting here. But once this candle came in, at least this portion of the wick, that cleared out these sellers. See how it went higher? Price went higher up, still alongside the wall, but came back down and closed, right? So in reference to this right here, we have one, two. This is cleared out, but this one wick up above, still next to a wall, that's a one count. That's established. Odd count means established. There's still sellers sitting there. Even count means it's cleared out. There's no sellers sitting there. Next candle. One, two, three, once this has happened. So again, this came down and closed, opened up here, probably went down, probably went up. Probably, yeah, probably went down, probably went up, probably closed here. But either way, we now have a one, two, three count, right? That means there were sellers here. Price came back into it, cleared these out, left this little clue here, came here, came back through, came up and came down. When it came down, it reestablished it because there were sellers here. These guys came in and cleared them out. They were no longer valid. But once price came back up into here again, that leaves us a clue that, okay, it reestablished it. There was people here, they got cleared out, then it just got reestablished because price came back in and is doing what it's doing. Then you look up above, you have a two count, one, two wicks, right? Alongside a wall, even, established, odd, cleared. There was sellers here, then they got cleared out. We go to the section above, one, two. There was established sellers, then it got cleared out. Then we still have this portion up above here, one wick alongside a wall. That's saying, hey, I still have established sellers here. Does that make sense, everybody? Anybody have any questions on that? I know it sounds kind of weird. I promise you, as we do this more and more, I'm just kind of introducing you guys to this stuff. It's going to make a whole lot of sense. But anybody have a question about that? Got it. Could you just go through it? You can do it fast, but just like go through everything again. Just yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Just make sure I got everything. Yeah. So again, I just want to give you a quick example of all that, how that worked. Um, oh, see here. Okay, we have we have a, now a fifth wick that's in here. If this was, we're not even we don't care about this area, but I'm just giving you using this area as an example for what white space is. So again, in reference to this area, see how this another this other wick came in here. We now have established, cleared, established, cleared. So this bottom portion is still cleared out. Up above, established, cleared, established. Odd count. That means there's still sellers sitting here. Established, cleared. That's cleared out. And then one wick, established. There's established sellers sitting there. So you can count this bottom portion cleared out. It is really, you'll, you'll, you'll see this, like, you'll see this time and time again, how, okay, this bottom portion is cleared out. Price will come back in and grab this established portion and dropped out, drop out, or grab this portion up here and drop out. So if you had an order sitting here, it was no good. But if you had the whole section covered, if you had more established than cleared, you can count that whole area. But you'll, 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 it's, it's really funny how it works. And we'll, as we do this more and more, you'll see it. It'll literally come here and ignore this cleared stuff because hey price is already cleared out of here we had this established order right above it'll come in and grab it so again in reference to this portion established cleared established cleared cleared out up above established cleared established there's still orders sitting here established cleared that's cleared out and then we have established orders here so yeah watch how price when price comes back into here see how this candle comes in again it restarts the count but it came all the way up here to grab this established portion up above and then came down and closed, right? <laughs> this is cool. Okay. So seeing here, once this has happened, we now have established, cleared, established, cleared, established, right? We have a five count, one, two, three, four, five count. So that reestablishes this bottom section. This upper section, next one up, established, cleared, established, cleared, we have a four count, that's cleared out. Then we have a uh, up above, established, cleared, established. We have a three count. 
that means there's still sellers sitting there. And then now we have this quick, yeah, looks this different. Clear, yeah, this clear. This, then the, yeah, established, cleared, cleared out, and then still established. Uh, all good. You guys are kind of getting that though, right? Established, cleared, established, cleared. It's just counting how many wicks there are alongside the wall. For some reason, this is the most difficult, challenging part for people to understand. But once you see this time and time again, it's going to make sense. Again, I'm not using this as a good example for a good trade to take. I'm just saying this is an example of how wicks work and what, what established and cleared mean. Is everybody getting that portion, or do you want me to show that again? Uh, one more time. One more time. You want to use this example or look for something new? We do something new. Okay. New one. New one? Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right, we'll just go just for example purposes of showing what white space is again. Let's say this is the area that we're identifying right now, right? What is this portion right here? What, what, would this count as white space or would it not be white space? This one yeah. wick next to a wall. Is it white space? Is it cleared or is it established? Established, I believe. I would say it's established. Why? Because it's a one count. It is one wick that is next to a wall, right? Right. There's not two. And then you look below here, we have this wick next to a wall as well, right? Okay. What's the count on? Whenever you see a wick next to a wall, you got to count. Is it one, two, is it an even count or an odd count? Anytime it's an odd count, it counts as established. If it's an even count, we call that cleared out. So let's just see, we're gonna come back to this. I'm gonna move left, but you see how this established area right here, this established wick, see how price just literally came into here till we have we have this white space, this one wick alongside a wall. See how this candle came up, tested into the white space, and then is moving its way down. Y'all see that? Yes, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So let's just go to this little section right here to the left just to talk about white space a little bit more. So we have this bottom. Okay, so we have this bottom is bottom portion right here, right? How many wicks are there? Two, right? So what do we do when we count, right? Established, cleared, established, cleared, right? There's a two count. Um, I'm gonna really give you guys a visual on it. Um, we'll make that purple, right? So purple means it's been cleared out, right? Because why? We have a two count. One, two, cleared out. Up above, we have the one wick, right? We'll make that um, We'll make that a bluish color, right? Then up above, we have the two count, right? Two wicks from this point up into here, those two wicks are even. That's a what? A one, two count, right? So that is established, cleared out. Then there's one wick up above still. Okay. So here, right, we have what? One, two wicks next to a wall, right? So established, odd count, cleared out, even count. One, two, established, cleared, odd, even. If it's even, it's cleared out. If it's odd, it's established, we're still good. Up above, one wick, so that would be an odd count that's established. Up above, we have a two count, established, cleared out. Price has cleared that out. It's no longer good. And we look up above, we have established, right? One count. Everybody see that? See it portion to portion. It, this, is, this is established. This is cleared out. This is established. This is cleared out. So let's just say, hypothetically, this was the area that I was looking to take a trade or possibly identify. And I, this was the picture that I got. I'm identifying this zone, is more of this zone cleared out or is more of it established? The answer cleared. to that question, more cleared, right? Cleared. Yeah, more of it's cleared, right? Because we have this section for all the way from top to bottom if this is what we were interested in possibly taking. But when we're looking at the white space, the wicks, more of the wicks are cleared out than they are established. So it's like, why would I take this? Why would I take this zone? This is a, again, we're working on a five minute chart in a super slow time. This is a 1.5 pip zone, but out of that, probably I'd say, okay, what? That's a 0.2 and a 0.2. So 0.4 of this is good. One pip of it is actually bad. So it's like, no, then you want you want the highest probability. You, we have these, and again, I promise y'all too, I don't know where you're at with things right now, but this all is going to make so much sense. But 
there's more of this. If this was an area that we were looking to take, more of this area has already been cleared out. So it's like, no, I'm going to look for something with a higher probability. I'm going to look for something that has mostly established stuff because that has that's my highest prob possibility of sending price back down if I'm looking to short it, right? Um, so here, right, we're going to go back to the left side. We're going to go through the whole from start to finish, ad identifying the left side and doing a trade real quick. Actually, I'm going to click on the chat real quick. Let's see what... I know I've been good at not looking at the chat, so I'm trying to make better habit of that. <laughs> uh, oh, and Wayne, yes, this is recorded. Also, everyone who is here, I have two sessions that are already recorded in our Discord group um, that I go over all. That, honestly, there are two like two hour plus sessions. I go through a whole bunch of stuff. So I would, if you guys like this, and it'll all make a whole bunch of. You'll get to see it start to finish in a lot of different examples. Uh, go back and check out those recordings, and this should be recorded as well. But um, okay, let's go ahead and go through a quick example, left to right, right. So on the left side, we go to step one. What is our this box? Out of the way. What is our action candle? Green, right? How many green? Three, right? One, two, three green. We ignore, we go to step two. What is our anchor? Our anchor is red. What, how many red? One, two, three, right? Mark the high and the low of our anchor, right? High and low of our anchor. Step three, is it engulfed? We look to the color to the left, the green, is the green engulfing the red? No, the green is not big, this one green is not bigger than these three red. So it's not sideways, it's not engulfed. We then go to step four, who's in control, the high side or the low side? We take the high side, we go across till we hit a wall, see these candles are lower, don't count, go across till we hit a wall, boom, we hit a wall here. We then go up and look for a color change, it happens right here, green to red. Mark green to red. We then take our low side. We go across till we hit a wall. Boom, hit a wall here. Go down. Mark it. See our color change right here. Red to green. Boom. What one of these happened more recently in time, not price, time, that would be the low side, right? So that means that the Buyers are in control because this happened right here at 1500. This happened back here at 1200. So low side happened more recently in time. Then that means we have an uptrend. We then go to step five. Do we have a setup? The answer to that question is how do we define that? What color is our action candle? Or what color does our action candle need to be? The sheet says we need a what kind of color candle for an uptrend? The answer to that question is red. What do we have here? Green. So yeah, we just did all that work, but we call that sideways. We skip it and move on. Wait, just to clarify, man. So you said yep. uh, on basis of six for time zones or for um, yeah. Well, okay. So when you're you're when you're using when you're identifying your uh, left side, what the trend is, whatever that is. Let's say again, you're using a three hour. When you go down to the right side to identify a zone you are going to do basically multiples of six is a good way, a safe way to look at it. So if I was identifying trend on a three hour, I would want to go down to a 30 minute to start looking for my zone. And if I was on a 30 minute, I want to go down to a five minute to start looking for my zone inside of my anchor. So real quick on this example here, you see our action candles kind of flickering green and, uh, Green, we're going to move it out. We're going to pretend that that's green, right? Because it's flickering back and forth. I don't want to confuse people. So right now we have what? One green candle, right? That's our action. We ignore. We then go to the color to the left. We have two red candles. That is our anchor. Mark the high and the low. Take the high side. We go across till we hit a wall. We hit a wall here, right? Mark the high and the low. We then take the low side, we go across till we hit a wall, we go down till we get the color change. Color change is right there. Okay, so who's in control? The high side. Oh, I'm sorry. Action candle, ignore. Anchor candle, two red. That's our anchor. Color to the left, green. Is a green bigger than our red? Nope, it's not sideways. It's not engulfed. We then go to step four. Who's in control? High side hits here. Color change. Low side hits here. Color change. What one happened more recently in time? 
high side. So what does that mean? The sellers are in control. So we then go to step five to see if we have a setup. We have a downtrend. We go to step five to see if we have a setup. Step five, if we have a downtrend, what color does our action candle need to be? It needs to be green. Do we have green? Yes, we have green. Okay. So then we go to step six. Do we have a level break? Is our green candle breaking the high of our anchor? No, it is not. So we have downtrend with the setup. Great. Now we finally have downtrend with the setup. We would then go to go to a five minute chart, right? So this top line, this is the high of our anchor. This low line is the low of our anchor, right? So um, we have to find a zone inside of our anchor. So what are we looking for? Strong move in, strong move out. Uh, right here, what I see, we have this whole portion right here, really. If you look at your sheet, we're looking for strong move in, strong move out. Um, there's also here, there's also what we call exceptions to the rules as well. Because um, again, we have to identify strong move in, strong move out price. This whole thing basically counts as our basing. Why? Because we had this strong move in, right? That's a strong move in. That's a powerful candle open here, trade a little bit, shot way down. Move in and move out. Move out is more important than move in. But uh, so the move in doesn't have to be as powerful as the move out. We're looking for a more powerful move out. But in reference to this one, we have a strong move in. We have basing candles here, right? These are boring candles. I know there's there's some companies, bigger ones in here, but overall we have boring candles, right? Less body than wick, less body than wick, less body than wick, and then a strong move out. So this in essence is a drop base and a drop out. What is the size of the zone? The zone is, again, it's just three pips, so this is nothing. Um, on time frame, when this is moving a lot more, it's so much more clear, I promise y'all that. But uh, right here we have a drop, strong move in, basing, strong move out. We have white space, right? I've got one wick alongside a wall. I've got wick alongside a wall. I have these two wicks alongside a wall. So here's, you see on your list, it says exception. You see how there's those two candles on there that are similar looking. They're actually drawn on that sheet. They have two wicks on it. You see how one is slightly higher than the other one. So I know we're doing the established cleared, the established cleared, right? But if you come across two wicks alongside a wall, that one is just slightly higher than the other one, we call that an exception. Those are like the twin towers, but it's just a little bit higher. When you see that pattern there, you can be comfortable in counting that all as one because anytime that it, that it, it almost matches it alongside a wall, there's just two, not when there's four, not when there's six, not when there's eight, but when there's just two candles, because really what's it doing? Price is drop, price drop here, closed, traded, went up, closed down here, opened, came all the way up testing all this and couldn't get to the top of it and shot out of there and closed. So when just when there's the wicks that are look just like this, this portion here, I'm going to go ahead and circle it just so we're all very clear. When you have that pattern right there, y'all see that on your sheet? That is the exception of the rule for white space. So, but again, we have a drop here. We've got basing candles and then here's our strong move out of the zone. So really we can take anywhere in the zone because established exception, this is cleared out. This is uh, this is cleared out, but then that portion's established. We have a three count here. That's all established and a one count. So basically almost all of this, except for this portion from right, right here to right here, that's cleared out. The rest of this, the rest of these wicks alongside a wall, one wick, the exception to the rule because of the towers, that's cleared. That wick right here, one wick alongside the wall, that's established. Then above that, we have a three count, right? One, two, three wicks up to this point. And then we have the one wick up above. So all of that is established orders minus this one section right here. So when looking for a trade to take, we have the drop, we have the base, we got strong move in, strong move out. We've got white space or exception to the white space rule. Um, is it fresh? Is it authentic? It's fresh because once this had, when this had happened and fell out of there, it's fresh because price hadn't come back into it yet. So that counts as fresh. Is it authentic? It is, this cleared, yeah. Because again, you got to look to the left to see price was coming down, price came back out, came back up, but then price shot through here, 
coming to bring price down below. That's authentic because these walls, these walls cleared out any orders. These walls cleared out the orders down. So it's fresh, it's authentic. We've got white space, we've got a drop base drop, strong move in, strong move out. And price is coming in, see how price is coming into our zone. It come in once, came out, it's, it's just, it's playing inside of here. Hopefully this is established wick right here. This might clear it out, that might, that might here. I'm not saying this is a good trade just because everything's so sideways right now, I wouldn't be doing it, but that's pretty much start to finish how, what you would do to identify the zone. We are on the 30 minute chart, looking for trend, green action, red anchor, not sideways, not engulfed. Sellers are in control because we hit the high side first. What color is our action? Step five, green. So that's downtrend with the setup. Step six, is our action breaking the high of our anchor? No, it's not. So we're downtrend with the setup. We then went down to a five minute chart, multiple of six within our anchor, high to low. We're looking for a drop base drop with white space. We have that, we have white space. We have a drop base drop. We have an exception to the rule and a bunch more white space. So that counts as a zone inside of this area. And again, y'all, this is, this is a, our anchor is five pips. Usually these are gonna be a lot larger and a lot more clear, but it's just, it's 10 o'clock at night and there's just not a lot of movement. But, uh, so we identified that stuff, you know, priced very well, wants to come in, test these wicks, and then it should be moving back down. Um, should be on the 30 minute, but then you have to take into account time frames. The higher time frame is always more powerful than the lower time frame. So although we were downtrend with a setup on the 30 minute chart, we're here on a four hour chart. On the four hour chart, are we not red action, green anchor? This is flickering, we're just gonna pretend it's red. Red action, green anchor, high, low, go to the low side till we hit a wall down here, color change, high side, all the way across, we don't even see it. So that means the lows are in control. The lows are in control. Um, that's an uptrend. What color does our action need to be? If it's an uptrend, this is flickering red. We're saying that it's red. We have a red action candle. So we're, see, there we go. We're uptrend with the setup. Step six, is it breaking the low of our anchor? No, it's not. So we're uptrend with the setup. We're good to go to the right side of the chart to look for a trade. So you need to be aware of that because do I really want, and it's sideways right now too, do I really want to be shorting on a smaller time frame when I'm on a higher time frame up with the setup? No, you don't because the higher time frame, something that was a lot more clear. And when we do this again, you go back and look at examples, you'll, you'll, you'll see some clarity. And then in future sessions, as we go through this, when the market's moving a little bit better, we'll see it too. But this whole style also is about being able to massage the charts and get the picture you're looking for. And right now, I would never take, a, I would never short right now. Because trying to short right now, it's super sideways. It's moving like overall from the high to low on this 18 pips in this little sideways area. It's not wanting to go anywhere. It's up on the higher time frames. Yeah, right now I'm getting, I'm getting a down with the setup on the 30 minute, but it's in the higher time frame uptrend. So why am I, why am I going to short? this trade when the, the higher time frame is telling me that it's one sideways and two, it wants to keep moving up. So, um, yeah, does that, does that make sense? Uh, anybody have any questions on that? I know we've been on this for more than an hour now, so we'll try to wrap things up. Um, hey man, do you have an yep. uh, established, um, I guess schedule time yet or? Yes. Yes. Uh, as of right now, I am, Mondays at 8 p.m. Central, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and then we're doing Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern. Does anybody else have any questions before we wrap this up? I'm all good. All good? Yes. Thanks, all man. Right. Cool. Yeah, no, I appreciate y'all's time. And again, I know we were kind of all over the place today. Go back and check out the uh, previous sessions. There's, there's some really, really good information on there. Um, yeah, so it was fun. Uh, we'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you. You're Good welcome. Night. Yep. Good you night. too. Yep. Bye-bye.